Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to Clash of Wills. We are just a couple of days deep in Clash of Wills and it's time to take a look at a couple of clears or rather one clear, but I'm just gonna show you, for example, how uh, the first clear that I did went. Um, and I did talk about this on Tuesday Preppers, you know, a team that looked kind of like this with like a water type clear. Um, this was the first clear that I did and this I did in about eight turns. Um, notice, you know, not, not very many uh, uh, Neovision Plus units in this one, so it's definitely doable without um, Neovision Plus. Um, but this does rely on two time-limited water theme units. Um, and so I felt like because this has two time-limited units that maybe people didn't pull for or don't have, I thought I might go with something a little bit different. Um, so let's take a look at, um, at a different clear entirely. Um, and that is one that is focused on the light element. So we're gonna go ahead and go into it, turn on all of our mods, and we'll take a look at the team and the gear. So here's our team. It looks very similar to the one I talked about on Tuesday Preppers. However, it does in fact include um, Stern and Celeste, just like I said. You know, I did pull for Celeste. The pulls did not go very well, um, but you know, we did get her and I got her at EX2 today so we can work on this clear. Um, but here's the rest of the team. We've got Abigail here for tanking, Kaito for breaking, Rick for doing some damage and chaining with Stern. Um, and then also Melissa for like the ultimate support because she's like super, super awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's get into the gear and stuff. Um, with all the mods on, our Abigail has um, 5,800 um, defense and 11,000 spirit. Um, and she's also geared with some um, water and light and some dark resist. Um, and that'll help her with like absorbing some of the damage. Uh, or resisting some of the damage. Here's her gear though, you know, kind of geared like that. Is wearing a blizzard orb for countering. Um, and then has just like, you know, as much, you know, I, I gave her some like defense filling gear for trying to get some defense um, and stuff like that. And this vision card too has HP and spirit and resistance on it. Very good for her. Awesome. Awesome. Here's Stern. So Stern has, um, you know, full killers. So he's got killers for. Um, beast, human, and machine. He's got LB damage. He's got true dual wield, um, and he's just uh, stacked out the wazoo. He's also got immunity to all the important stuff. And here's his um, his gearing right here. He's got his EX ability because he might have to be EX three, and he's wearing the Elena Vision card. Um, now, one thing I want to know: um, this high celestite tendon of will. This is definitely not a requirement. When I first did rank one with this team. Um, I did not have this, the high celestite pendant of will. I just bought it um, just to kind of play around with it tonight on stream. Um, so I went ahead and worked it into our, our build. It does work really well for him, giving him a higher modifier, um, but definitely not a requirement. You can definitely do this without that. And there's Stern, looking really cool. As a free unit, I'm pretty excited to play with him. Um, here's Kaito. Kaito has the Empress Rod, the Memorial Ring, Galvan Lily. It's gonna fill some morale in the first turn. Um, you know, kind of whatever. Um, and then um, he's wearing the water vision card. And then shift form, he's got, you know, all the killers. So beast, demon, human, or, or sorry, beast, machine, human, LB, damage, true double hand. Um, and that's kind of how he's geared. Show that gear one more time. I thought it was kind of hard to, to gear for this one, actually. There you go. He doesn't do a ton of damage, honestly, um, but he does do some damage. Now, Rick, here's his base form. Rick, we're going to use in base form to do his, his big damage, and he does chain with Stern, um, but he's geared for, you know, all the resistances. The main one is, is Paralysis, and then, of course, uh, very easily gears for Beast, Machine, and Human, LB damage, um, and uh, there you go. Now, um, his vision card, he's wearing his own, and then the ship form is almost exactly the same, except for he has Dispel Force. So Dispel Force you get from Angeal as his Trustmaster reward, and it's going to remove um, imperils. Uh, it's going to remove some, some stuff from enemies and allies at the same time. He's going to use this one time um, on the first turn just to kind of get rid of all the imperils that we have while also removing some buffs that the boss has. Um, but there you go. Um, the rest of the time he's going to be spending in the shift form pretty much. Um, there is a couple turns where he's in the base or the shift form. Otherwise in the base form the whole time. Here she is in all her glory. So in the base form, she's you know, geared with a bunch of clash gear just to help fill morale. 
um, and then some other stuff to kind of give her mitigations and resistances and, and restore morale and stuff like that. Does not have her EX ability yet. I don't have any abil an ability that she can wear at this point, so she's just stuck without it. Um, and for as far as the vision card, um, she's wearing Veritas of the Frost vision card, which is almost ex it's exactly like Rick. It's you know, just a little different, um, but she's wearing it because she benefits from it. And I don't have anything better to put on that slot. So there she is in her uh, shift form, almost exactly the same. Um, she's got a little chain speed and stuff like that to help build the chain for our um, our other chainers. But she is our primary DPS, which is weird because she's going to start our chain. But she does so much damage; it's going to be great. And then Melissa. Uh, Melissa's geared with a peppermint rod for morale fill, um, and an invasion and passive provoke. Also got a little, little bit of bulk um, and stuff like that. Uh, perfect provocation to try and you know, draw the attacks. And then um, her own vision card just to fill morale. And we do fill morale on the on the first burst turn. We have two bursts that we're going to do, um, and uh, and then we'll be done with this fight. Um, so there she is, and there is our whole team. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and. Um, Pause right here just in case there is an issue. As in, in case you have not learned, the first couple turns of this clear um, of this this fight, you know, there is some some potential where units can die, um, depending on how how like focused fire the boss is on those random attacks. Um, I've had it happen where the boss does not kill anybody, and I've had it happen where the boss kills two or three people in one run. Um, however, as long as like the people who die are Rikt, Hito, Celeste, or Stern, it's okay. Especially if they only die one time. By the time you get to turn three, it's relatively safe. Um, at that point, we get Abigail's SLB online, and we're going to be really safe. However, um, up to that, the first two turns are kind of risky for the main the, the DPS characters. But if they die, it's not that big a deal. Um, and hopefully somebody does, just so we can kind of show that and show what you would do. Depending on what character it is, you might take different actions. Um, my my chart that I'm gonna put in the comments does assume that nobody dies, um, but if somebody does, you just kind of adapt and adjust, especially if it's um, if it's uh, Celeste. Um, however, we're gonna do all of our big setup stuff on turn three when we get Abigail's SLB online, and so we really should be okay, um, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause right here, and then we'll get into the game. Okay, let's dive into it. And I will go ahead and get our um, our gear camera out of the way as well. Here's gear and the actions on the screen. If I can find them. Here we go. Okay. So, we're going to start with Rikt. Um, because, let all the auto casting go. If you'll notice, um, we have um, these water and light imperiled on us. And the boss has some uh, mitigation and attack and magic buffs. We're just going to use Rikt to use um, Dispel Force. Now you could just like not dispel the attack and or the, uh, the water and light. You could just attack with Rikt, um, and that would clear out the um, uh, that would clear out the buffs on the boss. But you don't want to use a rolling um, a rolling every turn dispel like um, Kaito or Rikt's abilities. We're not going to use those because we don't want to accidentally dispel. Uh, Melissa's in view. So first and foremost, Rick is going to get rid of everything. There we go. Now we're all in good shape. Um, and then Celeste is going to go second. Um, she's going to put up um, Enlightka, Barlightja, and then Dazzling Neon. This is the field effect for this unit. There we go. See, there's the nice 70% field on our side of the, side of the, uh, the screen. Um, Kaito is going to shift and he's gonna put up the enemy side field and then just destabilizing form and deep sub, um, sub uh, immersion just to fill morale and break the boss and stuff like that. So Stern, because all of his gear slots are filled up with like true dual wield abilities and stuff, um, he is very, very squishy. So he does not have very much health um, and we're gonna have him guard the first two turns just to kind of make sure we do not die or increase our chances of not dying. Um, but he, he very well could. Um, the uh, the first attacks here do do hurt quite a bit. Um, Abigail is going to do Shelga and Protectica, and then use Methodical Mitigation. Um, that's going to increase her chances of surviving. There we go. And then the last unit that's going to go is Melissa. 
she's going to use All Consuming Darkness, which is going to imbue the boss with dark for three turns, let us absorb dark for one turn from dark physical attacks, um, and then, um, or the, the boss's physical attacks, which have dark up. Yeah, and then um, that'll wear off, the, the absorption will wear off on, on the first turn. The second and third turn, though, the boss is still imbued with dark, so we're going to give ourselves dark resistance to not take physical damage, which would be pretty great. Uh, we'll go ahead and use Chronic Blow and Parasol Shield as well to kind of give ourselves mitigations, and that's going to help us survive. So we'll see who dies here. Hopefully nobody. But if uh, one of our DPS dies, we'll just adjust. Okay, Celeste died. Perfect. Why is that perfect? Because this is going to prove our point. So since Celeste died... Um, the only thing that we're really missing on Celeste is like um, mitigations and um, stuff like that, um, which does make her susceptible on turn three. Um, so we could do one of a couple different things. Um, we could just go ahead and pop a re-raise on her so that if she does die again, she comes back, or we could just risk it. Um, to do that, we would have to adjust with Melissa. I'm going to go ahead and show how we adjust, and we're also going to need to re-imbue Celeste just to make sure that she's got... Um, so that she's got uh, light for, for her imbue. It's not really that important. She's not doing any damage, but you know, you do get morale from filling with uh, light imbue, so why not? For now though, we'll go ahead and start with Abigail. And we'll do um, contingency plan, we'll do cover and drone decoy. Um, and that way she's now provoking off of Melissa. Okay, and then Stern is gonna guard. Aito is gonna put up torrential downpour. Uh, for Rikt, uh, and then he's going to uh, deep and destabilizing again. Um, Rikt is going to use his uh, shift limit burst. Kaito and Rikt are going to chain together. And Celeste um, is also going to um, do a little stuff. She's going to do a solar battery to imbue herself um, and amplify, and then uh, do chaining with energy slash. So to compensate for the fact that she died, she doesn't have re-raise anymore, we're just going to go ahead and use one of Melissa's actions to do that. Um, we're going to use Shared Immunity, um, and then Bardarkja. And normally we would give Rikt a Human Killer buff. Um, we don't really care that much. We're not trying to do a ton of damage on this turn. Um, so we're just going to skip it, and we're going to use um, just a re-raise spell, just to make sure that Celeste has it in case she dies again. That way she comes back and is ready to go for turn three where we really need to make sure nobody dies. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. And there we go. The Bardarkja helps us resist physical attacks. It's those, it's those Lance lasers that we need to worry about. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and chain everybody up. Kaito, Rigged, and Celeste. Okay, yeah, we're, we're still we're doing great. So we're hoping to see Celeste not die again, but if it happens, it happens. Lance laser on Kaito. Kaito used guts. Yes! Alright. Now we're good. From here on out, we really shouldn't take very much damage at all. Okay, first things first. Abigail's going to use her SLB. Okay. If you happen to be wearing the um, the high celestite pendant, you can go ahead and use this guild pendant right here. If not, just guard. Okay. Um, Kaito is going to go to the base form. And he is going to use um, receding tide just for more racial physical mitigation, um, and then two tranquil flows. Rikt is going to use um, luminous burst. That's going to be our big light imperil for the party, um, and then. Um, determination to protect two times. Celeste is going to use all of our big buffs here. So she's going to use um, Bright Future, Coordinated Teamwork, and Intelligent Combat. Those are going to be in effect for the rest of the fight, as long as nobody dies. Um, Abby, or Melissa is going to uh, go ahead and use Beast Killer on Rift. And we'll go ahead and use that human killer on Rick as well. That's going to fill morale and buff Rick up a little bit and use minutes of might. 
Now, Minutes of Might doesn't really do anything because we honestly Celeste buff is bigger. Like this is only 300 stat buffs, LB damage buff, and morale. So really, it's just morale fill. You could use whatever you wanted to fill morale, um, but we're just gonna go ahead and do it. So, Beast on Rick, Human on Rick. Turn chart says to do it, so we're gonna do it. Okay, and then we're just going to chain uh, Kaito and Rick. And with the um, with the SLB online for Abigail, we're gonna take significantly less damage here. Very manageable. Okay. Now all those resists that we're seeing is because Abigail has um, enough dark resistance to not take any damage. And so that's what's really cool there. Now, however, the boss on this turn no longer is going to be bossing and losing dark element this turn. So make sure we don't take any damage this turn. Um, Celeste is going to use her defensive stuff. We're also going to be preparing for our big burst on turn five. So we're going to use high tech blaster, high tech barrier, and surpassing limits plus. Stern's going to get in the fight. Surpassing limits, fighter of light, and um, uh, spiral blade. Kaito is going to go to the back to the shift form. And he's going to use downpour, flux, and stream. Rick is going to go to the base form. He's going to use Leading Light, Leading Legend, and Light from Within. Just making sure... Yep, very good. And then... Um, yes, <laughs> sorry. And then uh, Abigail is going to... Um, she's going to hover. Enemy data analysis to get rid of these defense and spirit buffs. And then uh, Shelga good and Melissa is going to use um, she's going to gear up beast killer on stern human killer on stern and then a protect and just kind of keep that buff fresh okay um, between all those we should have full morale here at the end of the turn so it's less to go there we go morale's full um, you know Abigail and Melissa can go there's just the uh, enemy data analysis thing there. Stern can go. And then Kaito and Rick can go as well. Now, with um, Celeste's really big ability, the, the, the high tech barrier, we're going to take minimal damage here. This is even, even less than the SLB of uh, Abigail. Gets us through turn four very, very nicely. Okay, and last not, but not least, before we burst, we're going to give really big buffs to Celeste because Rick has a, um, a big human killer buff already. Stern is buffed up. Kaito doesn't matter. Um, and then everybody's got pretty big beast killer. But we're just going to give like the extra big beast killer and human killer to Celeste. And then our last action is going to be a bar dark jump. Okay, we're ready to go. Now, we don't really need to use our um, attack and magic buffs, and that is because um, it's the less thing um, coordinated, it's called um, coordinated teamwork, is, is big enough that the morale buffs don't matter. So if you notice, like, uh, Stern has 30,248 attack when we use the buff. He still does, so it doesn't really matter that much. I like to go ahead and use them though. I just like to use them whenever they're available because I like that. Um, and on turn five, because we're going to push the boss's threshold, we don't have to really worry about any kind of like um, counterattacks. He kind of just like freezes his AI because he uses some um, threshold skills. So we're just going to like go all out and we're going to let Abigail use her chaining to help us out. Make sure you're using the shift limit burst of. Um, of Celeste because it is stronger, and the base limit burst of Rick because it chains with Stern. And our chaining is going to go Kaito and Celeste. Kaito first to put up the brakes. Kaito and Celeste. We're going to wait just a second and then Abigail, Rick, and Stern. Um, and it's going to look something like this. And we're aiming to do about 10 to 11 billion damage. Here we go. That's in the tens. 
10.6. I'll take it. Okay. We're almost done. Um, so, notice the boss has Mirage now. Um, and the boss also has some defense and spirit buffs. We're going to get rid of that. Um, so, um, first of all, we're going to use the SLB. This turn hurts a lot, so you want to make sure you are protected. Kaito is going to use Downpour, um, and then use Sun Glitter to put the field back up, and then Unpredictable Tide. That's going to get rid of the buffs. There we go. Boss still has Mirage, though you can see that. Rick is going to get rid of that in the shift form. He's going to use um, Radiant Protection. And then he's going to use Hope and Trusted and Determination to Protect. Very important that he does this before Melissa goes. Melissa is going last again. Um, Celeste is going to go back to the base form and use Enlightga. Uh, surpassing limits and dazzling the on them. Um, and that's she's she's gonna go to make sure she, Rick has um, light element imbued. Stern here is gonna use surpassing limits, fill LB, um, and prescience. Uh, there we go. We also are going to use the um, enduring will, water, and light skill. There we go, and then uh. We're gonna let Rick go first. So Rick is gonna get rid of the Mirage stacks and then um, just do a little bit, bit of chaining. There we go. Finally, Melissa is going to go last and she's going to use um, a Beast Killer buff. Uh, actually, we're gonna use a Human. Actually, he doesn't really need it. We're gonna use Human Killer on Stern and then um, a Parasol shield. Actually, wait. Nope. I'm gonna go by the chart. Ignore me. Beast killer on Rick. Parasol shield. Um, that puts up the mitigations and helps us survive between that and the SLB. We should take, you know, reasonable, controllable damage. Um, and then lastly, uncontrollable darkness. We're gonna do the boss with dark one last time. Pretty manageable, right? All right, looks like everybody's getting their LBs, so. This is a turn where like, depending on what you need, maybe Abigail is gonna chain, maybe Abigail is gonna fill LBs. In this case, Abigail does not need to fill LBs for our party, everybody's full. So we're ready to go. Um, so in that case, Abigail can just chain with us. She can join in the fray with her support lasers. Stern's going to use his regular LB. Rick has to go to the base form and use the base LB. Celeste is going to go to the shift and use the shift LB. Very important you have the right one. Kaito's going to LB. And to just kind of round us out here, defensive of support on Celeste. Um, and then Human and Beast on Celeste, just for like that big final push. Make sure you've used all your your buffs. I like to just use everything. And we're gonna do the same verse that we did on turn five. Um, so Kaito and Celeste, and then, you know, Abigail, Rick, and Cern. So here goes. Pretty significant overcap. And we're done. Turn seven, not too bad, not too bad. Probably one of the fastest I've done that was not a mania mode clear is turn, you know, turn seven. So for me, that's pretty, pretty up there in terms of speed. Let's take a look at our damage breakdown. Um, Celeste and Stern tearing it up. Remember, Stern only got one big burst. Celeste got two big bursts, um, but um, you know Stern had a um, 170 amp on the first burst, and he was down to a uh, 105 percent amp on the second burst. He also didn't get to use the SLB twice. He only got the SLB one time. 
the last used two really big bursts. One of them was um, 150 plus 70, so 220, 220 burst. And then the next one was a 170 burst. Um, or no. The second was also a 100 and... Yeah, 35 plus 70 is 105. But she has the benefit of morale. She had she had um, she had seconds of support, all that fun stuff. And then there's Richt, you know. Richt is hanging on. <laughs> Richt is hanging on for dear life. Um, but that's it. So there's our clear. So let's let's see if there's anything good we want in here. Um, uh, nope. And there's our rank one. So um, that's it. Uh, if you're if you're curious to see the water clear. I can show it. It's not that exciting compared to the white one. Um, honestly, the white one ends up being a little faster. Um, but now that I know a little bit more about how the fight works, maybe the water one I can get to maybe seven turns. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we're that's it. Um, if you want to talk about swaps, um, I mean, realistically, it, depending on what you have. You know, two B would be a good a good one to put in here, or Noctis, Shrinking Noctis. Um, if you don't have you don't have EX3 Stern, if you didn't pull for Celeste, I would say probably using Mirai um, as a secondary amplify unit, um, better than nothing. Um, even though she's definitely not as strong as Celeste, um, she is a relatively new unit and has a light amps. So there you go. Hopefully, you've all got Abigail, Kaito, and Melissa. They've been around for long enough. Um, that most people should have them. Um, Abigail, Kaito, and Melissa have also been available for like unit selects for a long time. So if you haven't gotten them by now, you really need to. Um, they are like extremely, extremely valuable. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully that is useful to you. Um, and if so, let me know. Um, if you want to see something else, if there, if you have any I other ideas about what might work for you or you know whatnot, feel free to ask. Um, and and see what else we can work on. But in the meantime, be good to each other, take care, and we will see you on Tuesday for whatever comes next. Or if I do another video, who knows?